Welcome to Yoga for Better Posture. Throughout the day, we slouch over a lot. This tends to squash our belly organ, and it can also restrict our breathing, which makes the diaphragm tight. In this session, we will focus on the core, which is very important to hold an upright posture. Starting really slow and rhythmical. Go in your own time. Exhaling forcefully and inhaling passively. Exhaling and then take a deep breath in. Expand abdomen, chest and as you exhale, drawing the navel back in towards the spine again. The second inhalation, just take about three quarters in and then retain the breath. Don't force the breath, so when you need to exhale, just letting go again, breathing normally. And we do this one more time, inhale about three quarters into the belly. And again, short, sharp exhalation. Keep the lips gently sealed, exhaling through the nose and passive inhalation. Maybe a little faster this time. Exhale fully. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. And then taking only about three quarters air into the lungs. Retain. So as you retain the breath, you might want to draw the pelvic floor in and upwards. And just allow your chest to expand. Exhaling when you need to. And then just breathing normally again through the nose. and then stretching your legs out, drawing the outside of your feet towards you. See if you can spread your toes, including the little one, and just bringing the thighs all the way down towards the floor. And then we draw the heels in close towards our bolster or pillows. So you want to come into a squat, so that's why it's good again to have these bolster here, especially if you find it difficult to squat with your heels on the ground. And just allow your lower back to rest by bringing your arms forward. So just giving your lower back a good stretch here. 
just reaching forward. Make sure that your knees are not coming too far ahead of your toes, so you don't want to strain your knees. Take your feet a little wider, the toes a little wider than the heels. And maybe just rocking back and forward here to open up the back. And if you find it generally very hard to squat, you might want to hold on to the side of your mat. I'm going to try to stand up here, so bringing the heels apart, coming into Uttanasana, our standing forward bend. That's why it's good to hold on to the side of the mat as you come back down towards the squat. So if that's very difficult for you, you might want to take a couple more pillows that you don't have to come down that far. But ideally you're keeping the heels to the ground, just opening them to the sides when you come into your standing forward bend. And then again, taking the heels in and the toes wider when you come back into a squat. So just doing that a couple of times here. Exhaling. And inhaling. So again, keep drawing up from your shins so the knees are not coming too far ahead of your toes. Exhale. And inhaling. You might even want to do that a little slower. Just a couple more here. And then coming back to your squad and just see if you can sit upright here, bringing the outer arms into your knees and your hands in prayer. So you're opening your chest, inhale. And then releasing the legs again. So again, just straighten your legs out in front of you. Maybe a little shake. And then coming off the bolster. And just put that aside. We're just stretching our back out. So come into all fours. Open your knees slightly, bringing the toes, big toes together. And then sitting back onto your heels. So you really want to connect the seats to the heels so that you're not arching your lower back as you're coming forward, resting the sides of your abdomen on your thighs. And if your upper back tends to pop up here in this posture, really work on drawing the chest down. So you might want to keep the head up and cup your fingers, taking your arms wide and broad so the shoulders stay away from the ears, and then working on bringing the chest down as you lengthen forward. Try to keep that seat on the heels, which prevents you from arching the lower back and working more on bringing the chest down and forward. Inhale deeply and exhale completely. And then flatten your hands here. So make sure that your fingers are equally spread. So sometimes the little fingers tend to spread a little further. So just creating an equal distance between all the fingers and straightening out the thumbs. And then just the knees slightly further behind your hips as you come into your upward facing dog. So just allowing that lower back to drop. But work on an exhalation here. So opening the chest as you exhale. Anatomically, the exhalation helps us to arch that upper back, which we want to focus on rather than the lower back arching too much. So exhaling as you come in here and inhaling as you sit back. So just see if you can notice that the upper back, the thoracic spine, becomes a little bit more involved as you exhale, coming into your upward facing dog. Yeah. 
And next time you sit back, just tuck your toes in and under and come into a plank. So just pushing your heels away, drop your tailbone and engage the sides of your belly, lengthening the crown of the head away. If you have, tend to have problems with your hands, if you find it very strong on your wrists, you might want to come down onto your forearms. So again, I'll give you lots of option in the session to grade to your ability. So if you find this better for your wrists, then please come down on your forearms. Otherwise, stay on your hands and press the index knuckle and the thumb mount into the ground. So we tend to lose that. So keep pressing the index knuckle, stretching the index finger forward and pressing the thumb mount into the ground and then bend your knees towards the floor just touching the floor and as you exhale push the heels away we're going to do that five more times exhaling and inhaling exhale and inhale three two and one and then exhale into your downward facing dog. So as you come into downward facing dog, draw the outer arms back towards your thighs and then just walk your legs out here, bending one knee at a time, melting the opposite heel towards the floor. Inhale and exhale, just walking those legs out. And as you gaze back towards your feet, right, just watch an alignment. Sometimes we tend to kind of roll the feet inwards or they're collapsing inwards. So suck that inner ankle up towards the center line. So you can watch your feet here really well and the alignment and just notice how that may change the alignment of your knee as you lift that arch. And then melting both heels into the ground again. And walk your feet up towards your hands. And then we just hang here for a moment, bringing each little finger into the crick of the elbow and the head between the arms, swinging from side to side. But go slowly here. So with the breath, inhaling to one side and exhaling to the opposite. And then releasing that again. So we're coming back down in a squat. This time you will need a brick or a block. Hold on to your side again and see if you maybe have released your calves a little bit more here as you come down into the squat, ideally keeping the heels on the ground. Opening the chest. And then sitting back. Bring the block between your feet. So you could use a book or something about hip width distance to keep your feet here in place. And then lying back Bending your elbows and holding on to the outside of the mat, lengthening the torso away so that the shoulders draw away from the ears and then bring your heels in close. So we're going to work on stability of the core as well as the lateral hips. Lift your hips just a couple of inches so you don't want to lift too high here and just check back with your hips. So we tend to have one side a little bit weaker than the other. So you want to level out your hips as you press your heels down into the ground and then reach your arms up to the sky, drawing the shoulders back, keeping the arms quite strong. With an inhalation, so keep watching your hips that they not drop as you begin to lift one leg, inhaling, so do this very slowly rather than rushing it, just to observe any kind of weaknesses in your body and also to observe if one side is a little bit different to the other. Inhaling, lifting the opposite leg and exhaling, releasing the leg back down. 
Keep checking back at your hips as you lift, just to notice if it's dropping and if you're stabilizing enough through the core as well as the lateral hip. So also watch your shoulders here and your neck because sometimes we tend to engage shoulders and neck and upper body too much if there's a weakness in the lower body. And the block or the book just helps you to keep your stand broad because sometimes we just want to make us a little bit smaller if balance is difficult. So you're just keeping the stand broad. Inhaling as you lift and exhaling as you release the leg back down. Just a couple more here. Keep checking back at your hips. Bring your legs out in front of you. So for this last final posture, which is a restorative one, again, you will need either your yoga bolster or maybe to a couple of pillows will be fine, or even a rolled up yoga mat will be fine. And then come to sit onto your bolster, whichever support you've chosen or you have at home. And then lying back down here so that your shoulders are on at first. You want to slowly begin to push with your legs, lengthen your tailbone away from you. And rather than kind of wriggling with your shoulders, so just slowly slide of the front but keeping the shoulders even on the mat so that they begin to drag away from your ears. Keep lengthening the tailbone away and slide all the way down until your shoulders reach the floor and then straighten your legs out but keep them relatively engaged as if you're standing. So it'll really open that front body, the chest and you might just want to bend your arms here. Take a couple of breaths, just getting used to this posture. Keep lengthening the tailbone away. Keep the feet engaged, pushing through the heels. And draw the upper third of your arm down into the ground to really open and lift that chest. Breathing into the belly. And then if you wish, you can practice this osteopathic technique to release the diaphragm. So you want to keep your hands quite firm but not crammed. And just hold on starting at your floating ribs. So hold on to your rib cage as if you're holding on to a shopping basket. Right? So you can really bring your fingers in quite deeply as you exhale and then resist your fingers being pushed out by your diaphragm, by your abdominals when you inhale. So gently moving the fingers just as a massage therapist would do. So resist being pushed out and maybe going a little deeper as you exhale. And we slowly move that up that triangle. So maybe every two or three breaths you can move your fingers a little further up. And then when you reach the top of the triangle the rib cage, massage that area. So a very important area, the sustainer chile, part of your lymphatic system, which helps specifically to drain extra fluid from your legs.
So if you tend to have swollen legs or when you travel a lot, long haul flights, it's a very good practice. Right, and as you come out, bend your legs up, roll off to one side. And then you can use the bolster or your pillows to place on your belly as you come into Shavasan. And this is really nice to emphasize the abdominal breath. So just noticing that the belly expands when you inhale and the bolster lifts up to the sky. And as you exhale, the bolster sinks back down to the floor and the belly draws in.